Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third episode of the Campfire a podcast for Internet Geeks. In each episode, we invite a guest from the global professional community, web professional community, to tell their story uh, to the to the crowd, everybody listening in. Um, tell their story about what they've done on the internet, um, some actionable advice uh, that that you can take away and uh, and and help to improve your business or your venture. Uh, so, with uh, without any further ado, um, I'll knock it over to Marcus Couch. Hey, Mendel. Nice to be back on another episode of the Campfire. We got a really Woo! great topic today. We're going to talk about being human in your brand. So, there's there's a lot to be learned, a lot to be talked about as far as different brands and different ways they haven't been so human. So, looking forward to the special guest. Joining Wait, us. Is that what we're talking about today? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, cool. All mm -hmm. right, sweet. So um, so I guess we'll get on with it. Um, Peter is with us. And, hey, oh, uh, hey, oh. oh, 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 there he is. And uh, and he's going to give a little intro of himself. Um, he's the co-founder of Good Blogs. He's an all-around good blog sort of guy. And uh, he's going to lay down the law for us today on being authentic. So uh, go ahead and uh, take it away, introduce yourself, and tell us what you'll be talking about today. Yeah, sounds good, man. I appreciate it, you guys. Um, so, so I'm sitting here in Iowa and um, co-founder of Good Blogs, content marketing platform I'll get into in a little bit. Um, married, four kids, and usually when I say four kids, people are like, whoa, WTH, why? Well, you know, it's a lot of kids. It's a lot of kids. It feels like a lot of kids. I mean, we're referring to ourselves as a gaggle of kids now. Um, <laughs> so officially, and that's so that's it's fun, awesome, honor, all that good stuff. Um, really love love doing that. Um, based out of Iowa, originally from Florida, and loving the beard. And um, and and start, started first company way back in in college, um, kind of by an accident. And as usually, you know, businesses usually start out of a passion, grew into a business, graduated from engineering, um, didn't, you know, go that route. Parents thought I was crazy, all that good stuff. Um, and then about four years ago, met my co-founder. He had a crazy idea. We ran with it. It's called Good Blogs. Um, and let me let me go ahead and share my screen, and we can kind of go through an example. And I'll give you just a quick rundown of what Good Blogs is all about. And then. We can get into the meat. Hey, while you're doing that, uh, where did you come up with the name Good Blogs? Uh, huh. it's probably. I think it was based around a domain name being available. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's like, a pretty practical, <laughs> uh, practical way to do it, huh? Yeah, it's like you know, you talk to the guys who started Clean Canteen, the guys who had the steamless. Yeah, steamless I love that canteen. thing. I have like two of them. Yeah. Yeah, and you find out like, oh, so why does Clean Canteen have? Why is it written with a K? And they're like, well, that, that was the domain that was available. Like, spelled correctly. <laughs> Is that really <laughs> the reason behind Clean Canteen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. You have enough money, money, money to buy the real one. Right, right. And that's how you see, you know, a lot of startups, they get, like, this really bad domain that's, like, it's, you know, some extension that doesn't make any sense, and then they end up going moving over to .com when they can afford to buy that domain from whoever owned it. So, um yeah, man. So, 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 good blogs. The domain actually was like it was purchased, but we were able to get it really inexpensively. Um, we're, you know, we've got some angel backing, but very little, and so um, we had to be practical. So, um, you know, it's a blogging platform that um, that allows people to sh just to kind of share what's good and happening in the in their environment, and so the name just kind of made sense. Oh, I just realized you guys have been staring at my ugly mug this whole time. No, anyway, so. I, I think I think we saved. Well, I think I saved us from doing that uh, by putting your screen on there. But <laughs> I, I I as soon as your screen came up, I shared it to, to I, avoid the ugly mug. So <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Man. Yeah. So so anyway, that's my background: mechanical engineering. Haven't really worked in that field since I graduated. Um, so I like to say I've got a PhD in sales. Anyways, so good blogs, real quick. Um, the 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 premise is this: um, we we built this platform the, from the ground up, and um, it allows um, brands that are using us to 
to, 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 to activate their, their target audience. And I'll give you a, like a live example. Um, it's called Of Horse. I always share this one because I think it's really the easiest to understand, right? So um, Featherlight Trailers, largest livestock trailer manufacturer in North America. Within that segment, their largest target is the horse lovers community. And so they come to us and they say, you know, how can we, um, you know, get people to blog about trailers? And we say, well, nobody's going to blog about trailers. Right? That's boring. Nobody's going to read that. Who, who, who do you, who are your, who's your target audience? And this is people that are, you know, that are interested in horses, right? So it's okay. There, there you are, right? So it's, we give these people um, anywhere in the world an ability to share what's happening in the horse lovers community. And here's what's really interesting. And this is how I, I, I you know, we can start talking about, um, you know, being human um, and how that kind of plays into what we're doing, but then how, how that can also help you. Is that, you know, how better, how much better can your content be if you let the people or the boots on the ground, so to speak, have a voice, right, and give them a platform to share what's happening. And so here on a horse, anybody who is in this, you know, field that's interested in horses, um, anywhere in the world, can share their expertise and share it to any of the categories. It goes to what we call the, the what's new section and then the community votes for their favorites, right? So there's a voting mechanism here. Um, that plus um, some of the so social, social shares will indicate to us what's best. And then, you know, at certain times of the day, I think this one, like yeah, 6 p.m. every single day, a post will get promoted to the top post section. That person gets paid. Right. So what are what are we doing? Right. We're taking this the idea of content marketing and turning it completely upside down. So instead of having a full content marketing team and an editorial calendar and trying to guess what people want or listen to or read about, and then hopefully you know it'll get shared and get out to the right people. How about we just let those folks have a voice? Let them share what's on their mind. Um, let them let them share it with their their friends and family and the community, and then let the community decide what they think's most applicable to them. Right. Um, and it's really interesting, like we had an example of this, you know, kind of like best, I mean, in, in the last couple of weeks where somebody posted um, Reiki for your horse. So if you're not familiar with Reiki, it's this energy healing, right, For that's typically for people. Um, and somebody was posting how to use it on their horse. And we were just dying because we were like, you know, this is, I mean, how much, how much more granular can this get? And on top of that, like no editorial team for someone who's targeting horses would ever think to post about something like that, right? It's, it's unlikely. And so it, it gives these um, brands ex access to these little sub pockets in the community that they maybe would never have access to and hearing about these things that maybe they would never hear about. So, so anyways, that's um, that's good blogs. And not, this is a kind of a chart of how that site was doing up until May or whenever they put this image out. And it's really interesting, right? It's a perfect example of content marketing, how it starts really slow. It's this marathon versus sprint analogy. And now as the content grows, the community grows, Google starts to see your influence, then the traffic kind of grows in this, you know, you know, familiar, hopefully, hockey stick. you got that, and they got uh, Flaming Vegan and some other sites. So um, that is, um, let me stop sharing my screen here. Yeah. Okay. So, question. Um, yeah. Is it, so is this a platform that you plug into um, to to another piece of software, right? Or is this something that uh, is a standalone um, platform? How how exactly does it integrate, right? That's sure. Sure. So, so it it is a custom platform, and we do it a couple different ways. Like this, these guys decided to have it on their own domain, right? So instead of having it sit on their domain, they wanted it separate. Um, and there's reasons, pluses and minuses to that delineation. And they've got other brands that like to um, that like to have it, um, you know, integrate in their domain. So we can do that as well. Um, and we've got some tie-ins where if you've got WordPress, we can have it sit on your domain. We're still hosting all the technology, but you can manage a lot of the admin with, within your, you know, your WordPress admin. Um, so it just depends on how tight an integration you want to have. But it's a custom platform. We host it because we're rolling out just continuous improvements. Um, you know, typically weekly. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so so you know, so that's you know that's kind of one aspect, and and I talk about that because user generated content I think is really really important when you know you're you're interfacing with your target audience and giving them an opportunity in some way to be to have a voice and to be uh, incorporated in, in, in some of the marketing that you're doing um, for all the reasons I just mentioned, right? So having access to them, making them feel like they're included, making them feel like their voice is being heard, and then 
most excitingly to me, kind of with a geeky sort of engineering background, it's like I love having access to those people because then you can ask them what's on their mind. Like Featherlight trailers, they can guess what they want to improve on their 2015 trailers and hope that it resonates with their community, or they can just ask them, right? You can just say, hey, guys, where are we missing the boat? You know, and a really cool thing about this is like, you know, inevitably when we're talking to a prospect, it's like, let's say, well, we don't want, we don't want anybody talking about our competitors, right? We want to make sure that we don't have any content. I said, absolutely not. You want, you want people writing about your competitors. You want people to, to write about what they're doing better than you because then it gives you an opportunity to improve what you're doing. And then you can actually respond to that and say, yeah, you know what? You're right. We're totally missing it. Like we should, we should have that feature or we should be doing this better. And we're gonna we're gonna respond to that, and then it lets this you know potential negative turn into a positive, and it says, "Hey, you guys are talking, you're complaining, and we're not ignoring you. Like we're listening to you, and we're gonna take that to heart, and we're gonna improve it." And so it's just I find it really fascinating, folks that are scared about getting this negative feedback. And and I always think about, and I like to use this example from Big Omaha, like two years ago, this dude was speaking, he's in the hospitality space, and he talks about this stat. And I found this really staggering. People that go to a hotel, let's say they, you know, they're going to the Shanghai Hotel and they have a negative experience and they take it to management, and management just like totally fixes it for them. That person is more likely to stay at that hotel again than somebody that just had a seamless experience. They went there, they checked in, everything went well, they checked out, they left. It's not as memorable, right? And so I think that it's really important to understand that if you've got a negative, you know, something seemingly negative, you really can spin that into something positive and create this customer for life, you know, for life per se. Um, yeah, so you I, know, I, I once heard, um, I once heard somebody talk about uh, about the idea of feedback, right? And they said, um, if you if you get no feedback, that's usually what happens, right? As a business, that's normally what happens. But um, but if you get negative feedback, that means people are listening to you, right? And that that seems like that seems like what you want. I mean, I would I would take negative feedback every day of the week, right? Um, over no feedback at all. Yeah. So Peter, yeah, Peter, let me ask you something about your model. So. Good blogs in itself, do, is it advertising supported? Is it just community run as far as um, if I want to start a specific community, do I do that or is it just based on your editorial needs? Or as a company, can I sponsor one of these uh, groupings and really try and encapsulate and capture an entire community in one place? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So we've got a couple of different models. Um, one is like the Featherlight example again, where it's like, okay, we launched this community just for your brand, and it's mm -hmm. your brand, it's it's your site, it's your content, it's based on our you know technology, but it's everything that's there is yours, and mm -hmm. you can do with that community whatever you want. Or we have some internal sites that we own. There's a veganism site, there's a maternity related site, some other ones. And you're like, oh, I'd love to get out in front of that audience. Let's figure out how to work together. Maybe it's a sponsored post. Maybe we, um, you know, you sponsor the call to actions, whatever the case may be, and you get a portion of that traffic. So there's a couple of different ways to go about it, um, just depending on budgets, et cetera. Um, and so that's 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 currently how it's working. Does that answer your question, Marcus? Sure. I mean, do you, as far as other revenue, I mean, I would anticipate that if I'm a business enterprise level or otherwise, that let's just take the equine, the horse site, for example. Uh, if I make custom horse equipment and, and you know, maybe uh, a saddlery that has some webcam ability or something like that in it or something to mount a GoPro on your saddle horn, um, I think that that'd be something I'd be interested in not only participating in but probably sponsoring you from a list capacity of a monthly newsletter that goes out to that community. So yeah. it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It's just this, it's this really, really targeted, defined, engaged uh, audience. Um, and a lot of times, I mean, we, we try to target these audiences that are, are sometimes seemingly difficult to capture, right, because they're, so, they're scattered and they're all over the web. It's like, let's give them a place where they can kind of, you know, uh, uh, gather and, and, and chat. And so that's why we're, we're working on some updates now that are going to give um, more of an ability for these members to actually, you know, talk to each other, uh, you know, whether that's messaging or that's a forum, we haven't figured out yet, but 
a way for them to not only submit posts and read them and comment and vote, but to get even deeper um, and really, really engage with each other and give them even more of a reason to come back and continue to, 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 to grow that uh, relationship with other community members. And, and what's your plans for expansion, say, into mobile? You know, we talk to everybody on the show here about mobile engagement, mobile's growing. Uh, you know, Mendel and I both attended WordCamp San Francisco where Matt Mullenweg discussed mobile adoption, mobile usage, and the fact that even WordPress has got to change dramatically in order to keep up with the technology in the world, the fact that there are more phones than there are humans on the planet right now. So um, how, do you, how do you adapt to mobile technology, mobile uh, content, uh, submissions and contributions from the community and perhaps that it engages it even more because now they've got something that they can embed photos and videos and things like that into your platform. What's your plans for that? Yeah, yeah. So we rolled out fully responsive design about a year and a half ago or so and so they can uh, engage with the content in that, in that regard. They can you know, submit comments and vote and all that good stuff. They could submit a post, but if you're writing a full post out on a phone, that's probably going to be really intensive. We are working on a few other integrations where people are going to be able to submit, you know, video blogging with a, you know, with a more basic summary. Um, and I think that'll be um, probably more conducive to mobile submissions of content. Um, but other than that, I mean, we've been responsive since as, as you know, as, as early as we could. Um, and so that people can at least consume content. And then we've got a couple of other mobile targeted um, uh, components where we've got some email capture and then also some, some, some uh, kind of uh, mobile polling um, software where we're actually able to gather some information on the person that's on the site and engage with, uh, with them and potentially turn that into conversion for the client or for ourselves. And so um, we've been pretty strong on mobile. Um, but there are some, a few things that we think we can get even deeper on. Um, tell tell me more about that uh, that analytic uh, interaction stuff uh, yeah. you just mentioned. That that sounds yeah. pretty interesting. It's it is super interesting, man. So there's a, so there's a couple tools I think that folks really really should be you know consuming. One has kind of really made a huge splash on the scene this year. Um, Noah Kagan from AppSumo. Um, they they've got another company called um, uh, King Sumo. And they've got all these free plugins that, that, I mean, anybody, you know, you don't have to have technical, technical knowledge or anything. You can drop in on your site, and you can start gathering all kinds of information. So they've got their own version of the, what's called the Hello Bar. You guys are probably familiar with that. It's a little bar at the top of the screen. You can gather email addresses. It ties right into MailChimp and a lot of other services. Um, they've got an email pop-up capture form, which has got some really, really good conversion uh, numbers on it. Um, really easy ways to do on-hover image sharing. Um, they're rolling out heat mapping. I mean, they've got all kinds of tools that, that they've been rolling out seemingly every week now. So check those guys out. Um, uh, the, the, the polling software I'm talking about um, is by a company called Qualaroo. Um, we've got the super enterprise um, edition because we're rolling them out on all of our sites. And so I don't know how accessible they are now to someone who just wants to roll them out on one site. Um, but it's, you know, this, this company was started by a few guys. One of them is named Sean Ellis. He's the guy who, who coined the term growth hacker. And um, this polling software is super, super effective um, if you use it correctly because you can ask people seemingly simple questions, seemingly obvious questions to lead them in. And then they go down the path. And we've really played with it um, to see how many questions will somebody actually answer, right? Especially if they're multiple choice. And I think we've gotten to 10. And I'm just floored. I'm like, who are these people that are answering 10 freaking questions on the site? But they're there, and they are. And it's just like you pull them down the path, and then eventually you can get maybe an email capture out of them, or maybe an address, maybe a phone number, um, so that you can turn that, you know, that browser that maybe – Maybe he'll never create an account, so you can't keep targeting him that way. Maybe they won't submit an email address to the pop-up. But maybe if you ask them the right questions, you can find out kind of who they are, what trips their trigger. Um, and it's really smart because if, you, if they answer a question one way, then it leads them down a different path, right? So it's totally segmented. It's beautiful. So that one's called Qualaroo. I check those guys out. Um, and then on a side note, you know, if you guys, um, if people listening are interested in content creation, there's a site... I buy the same folks called BuzzSumo, B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O.com. I love this site, man. And Marcus, you've probably heard of it, I'm guessing, because you're in the kind of the content space. I haven't. But no. You haven't? Okay. Tell me dude, all about it. Dude, this site is awesome. So you go in there, 
Um, and you just put in a search, right? Let's say um, the, the example they always have in there is content marketing. But let's say you're doing something really sim you know, specific. Let's say it's horses, right? Mm -hmm. You put in that keyword, and you can see the most, the most shared posts with that keyword in it. And you think, okay, well, why is that important? Well, it's important for a number of reasons. One, you use that to figure out, okay, it shows most shared, right? So clearly, people are most engaged with it. Why? Subject line, maybe. Content, maybe, right? And so you can do a couple things. One, you can say, okay, this, this, this content's getting shared like crazy. Clearly, this has got an intriguing title. I need to riff off this title and figure out, you know, and see what's working and maybe make a title that's even better, right? That incorporates some of the psychology there. Same thing for the content. You look at the content and you think, okay, this is really good content, but I think I can go a lot deeper than this guy went. So you can take what he wrote about, the subject matter that he wrote about, and improve upon it. Maybe it's a one-page post. Maybe make it a ten-page post. Make it really, really, really deep. Um, and so I love it. So if, if you know if anybody listening is into the content creation business or they're blogging or whatever, if you're not, you should be. Um, check out BuzzSumo, man. I love it. I think it's a, it's an it's an amazing tool and it's free right now. I don't know what their their you know their monetization um, um, strategy is going to be going forward, but. Uh, a damn good tool, and I, I recommend checking it out. I'll throw sounds like a fun place for uh, sounds like a fun place for comment spammers to s find good places to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, if you're a professional <laughs> troll and you're getting bored, I mean, go to BuzzSumo. You find some other stuff to comment on and troll. There you go. So, Sweet. I'll, I'll, so I'll throw the I'll throw the links in. Um, Gonna ask you something. Uh, it, it, it was centered around uh, creating. Oh yeah. So you you made an offhanded comment. If you're not blogging, you should be, right? Yeah. I think it's I think it's worth touching on. Why? <laughs> why, why the hell should I blog? Yeah. <laughs> why, why do I care, right? Yeah. So it's funny, man, because so so we're in the content creation business, right? But it's like one of these analogies, and I use it, and I hate it, but it's true. It's like the mechanic's car is like the worst running car in town, right? He's fixing everybody else's ride. He's not fixing his own. For us, we're creating a ton of content, getting a lot of content created by the users for all of our clients, and we've done a piss poor job of doing it for ourselves. And so we're we're in the you know we're we're exploring it right now. Finally, also, it's like, gosh, man, we should be writing about content marketing for our content marketing, right? Um, and so. Uh, why? Why do you? Why should you do it? I mean, there's a bazillion different reasons. One is that you know, and this is our you know, based on our topic that we're supposed to be talking about today, which is being human. And <laughs> it's 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 like you know, how how much better can you relate to your target audience than communicating and sharing some information with them? So Gary V says, jab jab jab, right hook, right. So you're like you're constantly giving and you're sharing and you're sharing all this content that's helpful for them. It's not self-serving. It has nothing to do with the product that you're that you're selling, and you keep putting it out there. And why are you doing that? One, you want to create a relationship. You want to pull people through. And all the stats say, you know, seven plus touches with your brand before they're actually going to maybe consider buying something from you. Some places say it's twelve plus, whatever the number is. So you know that you've got to touch them very lightly with very helpful information, right? So you can start this relationship, um, and then and then on, and then you're pulling them through the process. And at the same time, you're directly selling your expertise to them. And they may not even realize it in the beginning, but it's like, I'm going to keep talking about content, not talking about my product at all. And then in the end, you say, man, this guy's totally right. I totally should be doing that, but that sounds like a hell of a lot of work. Maybe I can just hire that dude. And you think about it, that's where a lot of these authors, they get a lot of their business. So there's a, so there's a guy, um, his name is Aaron Ross. He started um, the, the outbound sales pr uh, process for, for Salesforce, took it from zero to $100 million in five years or some crazy number. Um, and then he writes a book called Predictable Revenue. If you're in the sales business, which you probably are too, um, you should read that um, book. And the guy, I mean, I am speculating, but I'm pretty dang sure I'm correct, in that he's got to get a lot of his consulting business from that book. Now, you think about it. That book has nothing to do with his consulting business. It's only talking about the process that they started and they created and then what he's recommending to them and he's telling them exactly how to do it themselves. You read it and you think, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I do not feel like setting this up myself. I'm just going to call this dude and pay him a ton of money and let him do it for me, right? That, um, it's, that happens with a lot of web developers too. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the same story, right? People get stressed out. They say, oh, I don't want to get out there and, and teach somebody because then they'll know how to create a website and, and, and then I'm just 
you know, I'm in trouble because I'm giving away all my business and they're going to go make it and they're not going to come to me. What ends up happening, they get in a tough spot, right? And they need to get something out there uh, that's production quality or, or, or they need some advice or something like that. And, and they come back to that person because they were the expert. They're the one that helped you get started, right? Um, the power of knowledge, right? The power of giving, giving knowledge to other people. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter how you slice it. It always comes back to, um, to you, to the community, to wherever um, tenfold, right? When you give, you, uh, when you give, you get, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely, man. And the bottom line is, and not to be negative, but people are super lazy, Right, so they're they're willing to read all about these things. They're gonna read like 20 books on how to design a website or whatever your example was, and then they're gonna be like, you know what, this sounds really cool. I'm not doing it. You know, I'm just, this guy sounds like he knew what he was talking about. Let me just hire him, let him do it. Right, and then I can feel good that I made a really good informed decision. So, um, absolutely, man. I'm in, and that's the society that we're in now. It's like you know, you just keep giving. You know, that's I mean, that's that's, that's the whole content game. It's like you you want. I want to keep giving this content out. Give it out. You know, some people are never going to hire you. Some people are are going to take your advice and they're going to run with it, and that's cool. Um, but there's a there's a large majority that's going to say, you know what, you really know what you're doing. Um, I I buy into this methodology. I've been following you for a long time. Come on in and help us, you know, fix this content problem we have, or or you know, be our designer, or, or you know, help us with UX or whatever the case might be. So, um, and that's really what you know. One of the things I really want to talk about, as far as being human, is like you want to start with a GIF, right? You want to start with with here's some information that's going to help you, um, and there and and this and it kind of leads into some of the stuff that we've discovered recently that I wanted to share because um, I'm finding it really fascinating. And in hindsight, it is it's 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 intuitive, it's simple, and it's like, well, gosh, how do we miss this? And so I'll give you an example. One was in, you know, it's all in our messaging, and one was in our email messaging. So we've got this huge um, outbound sales process. Um, we've been refining it quite a bit through this predictable revenue by Aaron Ross that I referenced earlier. And getting some good results, but we're always trying to improve. And so one day we're sitting around and we're talking. And we're talking about how we had, a, you know, this recent um, um, public event where we had some folks come in from the community, and we just we call it Coworking Friday. Um, it used to be called Beer Friday, and that didn't go over so well with people's employers, so we changed it to Coworking, which really is no working. It's just it's still Beer Friday, okay? Anyways, so this person comes in, and they're sitting around, and we're all, I mean, it's just, it's really, it's, it's lightweight. It's no big deal. Everybody's chatting and introducing themselves, and it's, it's, it's cool. This newcomer comes in. And we say, hey, what do you do? And it goes into this like very serious presentation with business cards getting handed out. And I'm like, wow, this is uncomfortable, right? This is like not how we roll. But then we start thinking about, we're like, right, the new guy. So, that, but then we start thinking like, well, wh what if we, what if we read our emails out loud, our cold emails out loud? So we start reading our cold emails out loud. This is a different time now, right? And we're like, man. Our cold emails are just like that person that came to Coworking Friday that one time. It's like very uncomfortable, too stuffy, um, and so we start changing our messaging up. And you know, you don't want to be um, so damn informal, informal that people are um, offended. Like, who's this Peter guy writing me? Like, he knows me. I don't even know who he is. But at the same time, it's like everybody's getting these emails that are very structured, very professional, very inhuman and robotic, and it's so dang boring, right? Like, people are just deleting those emails. If I get them, I just delete them. I get them all day long, right? But if you get this email from somebody who is being personal, you could tell they did their research, and most importantly, in my opinion, they stroke your ego from the beginning, then you're much more likely to get a response, and plus you're just like kind of this purple cow. I don't know if anybody out there has read Purple Cow. You guys read Purple Cow by Seth Godin? No. Okay, you guys got to read it. Seth, Seth has got it going on, though. He's got it going on, man. And, it, and the whole story is like him driving through the south of France or somewhere, and they're seeing all these cows, and it's like brown cows everywhere. And initially, initially it's in, you know, it's, it's intriguing, and then eventually it's like, oh gosh, these are all just brown cows. And then you start ignoring all the cows because you've seen so many brown cows. But if you saw a purple cow in the field, and that would be interesting, right? At least in the beginning. Um, and so it's like you want to have some kind of this purple cow approach. And and so 
you know, I, I'll give you an example of, of how this worked for me. So Marcus Sheridan, who's like one of the top three content marketing guys in the country, if not in the world right now, he's a stand-up guy, one of the most dynamic speakers I've ever heard. And I email him, and I'm, I'm thinking, I want to get a hold of this dude, the seemingly unreachable guy, right? And so what do I do? You know, I send the guy an email, and it's, is it super structured? Like, hey, Marcus Sheridan, I really have followed you, and I like you a lot. No, man, I didn't write him that at all. You know, the, 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 the title of it was why you were my favorite presenter at, I don't remember, what social brand form or whatever conference it was. And then I, 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 the first couple sentences are, are you know, hey, I, I was listening to your podcast number 27 at, at timeline 1853. Your listener asked about this question. Like really engaging with him, showing him that I am interested in him. I'm listening to him. I'm following him. And then I gave him a quick bullet points of why he should reply, right? And it's just some goof. There was some goofy stuff in there. I was like, hey, even if you hate me, you're going to love my product. Um, uh, I, I think the, the product or service I have is going to be effective or helpful for you and your listeners. Um, all these different things. I'm going to respect your time. And that elicited a reply, and I get to talk to the guy on his cell, right? Like seemingly this unreachable person. And I, to me, it was like, I don't think he got another email like that that entire month, right? Other than the structured thing. And so I think that. It is so dang important to um, to to not only you know to to take take the robotic nature out of it and to be human, um, but to also you know make the email initially about them, stroke their ego, letting them know how you're going to help them. Start with that give versus talking about your product. Okay. Um, another example of this, really quickly, is um, how we changed with our messaging on the site recently. Right, and this is actually after I talked to Marcus. Right, so initially our site said, "We attract, then convert your ideal customers." When he read that to me over the phone, I almost threw up because I'm like, "Wow, I've never I wrote you know we wrote that, but I've never really listened to it." And so I I I, I kind of I encourage you guys to read your messaging out loud and have somebody that you don't know or maybe somebody that doesn't know your product read it to you and see if you puke or not, right? Because for us, it was like, he goes, he goes, Peter, what the heck does that mean? And he goes, and second of all, if your message can be on like a thousand other sites, it doesn't mean anything, right? It's, it's just, it goes, and then on top of that, you're not talking about me, you're talking about you. And when I come to your site, I don't want to hear about you, I want to hear about me. I'm self-centered. I want to do. I want you to help me with my problems, right? And so, our site now says, creating content is hard. Finding writers harder. You'd rather be cleaning toilets, right? Right. So it starts with like it's 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 funnier, right? And then it also talks about their problem and speaking to them. Now imagine if you're having a conversation with somebody and immediately start talking about yourself. People are going to tune you out, right? They're like, oh, this guy is just stuck on himself. I don't really care about you. I want to talk about me, right? Um, so even when you're meeting people in person, I think the same approach is it applies. Like, ask people questions. Ask them about them. What are, what are they deal, dealing with? What are they working on? What problems are they looking to solve? Listen to them and ask for more and more and more information, and then you can speak to those issues, right? Whether you can help them or not, whether it has to do with your business or not, is it, you know, it's not necessarily important in the beginning. Yeah, so I, I would argue you can you can help people either way, right? You you can always help somebody. You always have a connection or something unique that you can offer somebody, whether it's an umbrella, right, or or an encouraging word, or uh, on up to you know the things that you have within your organization, your business to help out. Um, in in Chicago, I did a whole lot of meetup stuff there, right? Uh, went to a lot of networking groups, learned a lot about people, and what I realized is that every single person will walk up to me and they say, what do you do, right? And, um, and this is what I do, right? That's how people introduce themselves to each other. That's how, that's how it happens at networking events and stuff like that. And as, um, as I go out uh, um, building community, right, because that's my job, I go out and I say to people, um, uh, what are you passionate about, right? Like what, what gets you going, right? And, and I like that because it opens up a different kind of conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Then the conversation, A, is about them, and B, it's actually something interesting. Uh, you actually get to understand how you can contribute to their passion, right? Or how you can, how you can help them um, uh, learn something new or have a new tool or, heck, maybe be passionate about it yourself, right? So mm -hmm. um, that totally resonates with me, the whole idea of being authentic and, and, and having... 
an authentic conversation with somebody instead of that guy. I, I hope he's not watching. Um, that that uh, you know just handed out the business card and did the formal pitch because I've seen it and there's there's not a quicker way to um, to to stress me out right because then then I'm I'm trying to figure out how to get to that passion right and sometimes it's two or three layers deep because they've so ingrained this 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 process right of meeting somebody and and. And, and and doing this formal thing, right? That it's hard to get past it. It's like a brick wall, right? But when you do, it's super interesting. Super yeah. interesting. And I don't think you and I ever had that problem actually, because I think I think I think I was talking smack to you from the first time I met you and and somehow we never had that interaction, right? That 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 hey, what do you do? What do you do? Right? But mm -hmm. but you know the people I'm talking about and and it's rough. Super. Rough. It's it's rough, man. It's rough, and, and they I try struggle. To... They struggle because they're doing that, right? They're revving a uh, hundred times harder, and they're not having fun with what they're doing. And the people people that aren't doing that are having fun. And here's a. It's, it's so great you said that, Mendel, because not only are you not having fun. You're ineffective, right? So, like, your sole purpose, let's say you're going to a networking event or you're going to a conference or whatever, not only are you having a miserable time, you're not even reaching the goal, which was, like, to make connections with people. So how about you, like, reach your goal and maybe even surpass the, con the connections you'd want to make and you actually have a good time while you're there, right? Um, and, and you make these deeper connections. I mean, because the thing is, the bottom line, when, when it comes to business in general, and I don't care what industry you're in, it all comes down to relationships. I mean, it's like, that's it. Like, end of story. Yeah. And here's the example. Go to a conference, meet with your peers, people that you've met with and talked to 10, 15, 20 different occasions, or go to the guy that you're handing the business card to and you give the 30-second elevator pitch. Where does your business come from? Not right. that guy you gave the card to. 90% of it is going to come from either that group that you've got there or friends of the people in that group that went through the friend to get to you. And that's how business works. So we're talking about being human, being social, being you know networking together. That's one part of it. If you want to succeed with yourself and your own personal brand and your own business brand, you've got to break that wall between the 30-second pitch and having real content and real value. You know what, man? I would even say forget the business card, right? Forget the yeah. business card altogether because the authentic interaction – um, now that I'm now that I'm thinking about the the anatomy of an authentic interaction, right? It's hey, I want to hear what you have to say. I'm genuinely interested. I'm genuinely contributing to the conversation. Um, if we want to meet up after this, or we want to do business together, or we want to continue the conversation, you don't do that with a business card. You do that with an email right on the spot, and you say, hey, I'm going to shoot you my info. Why don't you reply back to that email and give me a shout? Or, hey, here's my cell phone number. Throw it in your phone, right? Or, or I'll text you, uh, you know, tomorrow night because I think we're going to go out for drinks and I want you to come out with us, right? That's <laughs> – it's, it's almost like um, being authentic is about making new friends, right? Totally, man. Totally. And the thing is, like, you say it and it sounds so stupid, right? You're like, oh, yeah, I'm making friends. But no, dude, like, I think we forgot it. It's like, it's like we've forgotten. We're, we've gone to a point where we're trying to be so efficient with our time, right? Efficient with email, efficient with whatever, that we've forgotten that we're all human, that we're all looking for friendships. We like to have a good time. We, we like that interaction. It's like we've. We've forgotten it. Like it's just, it's like it's like gone to the wayside. I don't know how many times I've had these uh, interactions with other folks in the industry with like, hey man, I can't get through to so and so. Like okay, yeah, you know, or we're having a disagreement on something. Like okay, so wh what did you guys talk about last time you talked? Oh, I, I I've never talked to them. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, we've only emailed. We've emailed back and forth. <laughs> like that's the easiest way to have a disagreement or have a misunderstanding. Pick up the damn phone and talk to these people. Like, what's the matter, right? Um, and so, you know, I, there's a, a deal today where it's like, oh, we're not having any head these people are button heads. I pick up the phone and talk, I talk to these folks, and like five minutes is fixed, and we're going to sign the deal tomorrow, right? It's like, oh, that could have dragged on and on and on via email for weeks and weeks, and maybe never closed the deal. Um, and so, yeah, man, I mean, absolutely, like, 
like have drinks with these people, right? Like actually have deep conversations. Don't talk about business at all, right? Do you, do you think a lot of that? Do you think a lot of the problem though comes from people being scared, right? So, my, I, I'm the guy that never used to sit in front of the classroom, right? Never used to do it. Um, uh, I, I, if if there was a speech, I was close to the back, right? I was probably. I was probably taking a break, right, walking outside for like ten minutes or something like that. And and if <laughs> if there was somebody speaking in the front, um, you couldn't find me for a second walking up to shake their hand. Right now, there are two things I do in every single presentation. I sit in the first row. Why? Nobody else is doing it, and I get an awesome picture for Twitter. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> number number two, but sit there mostly because it's more engaging, right? Um, number two is I, I usually not a hundred percent. I'd say ninety percent of the time, walk up to the person presenting if I enjoyed what they're saying. Hundred percent of the time, if I enjoyed what they're saying, I will stand there. I will wait patiently. I will walk up to them, and I won't ask them for an autograph. I won't ask them for a favor. I won't ask them for anything like that. I walk up to them and I say, you know, a man. That was awesome, you know. Like, like I really appreciated this part. Or, um, you know, gee, I've I've never heard somebody, uh, you know, talk about something the way you did, and you're just fantastic. And and whoever it is, right? If um, if the speaker, you know, if she's famous, right? Or 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 if if he's just from down the block, right? Um, it doesn't matter because. Everybody got their start somewhere, right? And and everybody deserves to be a human being. And these these people that are speaking, they 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 want this, right? They thrive on these interactions. So um, I say, get up, get out of your seat, and like feel a little uncomfortable. You know, yeah. go go and talk to somebody and get out of your comfort zone because uh, soon, it, like now, I'm not like I'm not uncomfortable at all. I'm I'm walking up in front of a an auditorium full of you know, a thousand people sitting in the front row, and I don't think anything of it because I'm like, dude, if nobody else is sitting here, game on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me give everybody an example of how to be human not at that conference. Let's just say you want to be human to somebody that's a thousand miles away. Tell us how, how to be do human. <laughs> well, the first thing to do is send them something. Send them something physical in the mail. FedEx huh. is the best way to do it. Who's not going to open a FedEx when it comes to them within mm -hmm. 10 minutes? You're not going to just let that FedEx sit on your desk. No way, especially if it's something big. Now, I will tell you a secret. One of the biggest clients I ever got was because I put on the box, I have an entire army that will fight for you and your business. Hmm. And in, inside the shoebox, it was nothing but plastic army men. <laughs> That's I love it. All it was. Okay. Awesome. Went to the dollar store, got six bags of plastic army men. It cost me a total of six dollars. It wasn't a Rolex. It wasn't uh, the cheese tray. It wasn't a bunch of bull crap from Harry and David or any of that stuff that you think you gotta bribe people with. Okay? And I put my business card in there with two army men holding it. And guess who called me the next day? to say how much fun the office had playing with the army men and you know I'm interested to learn a little bit more about your army and your team so think creatively and be a human and and have fun and that's that's what email lacks that's what a subscription to an email list lacks that's what mastermind calls and webinars lack is if, if you need ideas on how to be human, by the way, uh, send <laughs> send a send a message to uh, to Peter or, uh, Marcus on on Twitter, right? Just tweet at him, be like, "Dude, how do I how do I get more human with this interaction? Help me <laughs> out." I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm inviting uh, conversations to you, Peter. I know uh, Marcus likes them, but I love I, it. From what I understand, you really like it when people are authentic. So I, you know, I just figured. Out. <laughs> no, I love it, man. And what Marcus is talking about, that's straight purple cow, right? That's that's like another plug for that book, dude, is that, you know, you want to do something that's different. Like, you don't want to be another Me Too player. I, this phrase I just heard from Tony Robbins recently was like, you got to zig when they zag, right? Like, everybody's doing this. You need to do something different. 
Um, and I, lo I love that phrase, man. Like, you got to zig when they zag. you got to do something different. Like, you know, Marcus, you're targeting the sky. You're sending them army men. Everybody else is probably sending them, like, a free book or, like, here's this free iPad or something, something totally right, more expensive. a fruit right? basket. A fruit basket. Or somebody said the fruit basket. <laughs> You know, and so yeah, you've 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 got to be it, man. You've got to like just show some of that personality with with uh, with your interactions, dude. I I love the example. I love it, love love it. Yeah. Um. What? Well, one more. Uh. And and that is, you know, we we took uh, a a radical stance on uh, community engagement. Um. So when we were looking at kind of changing the face of um, like GoDaddy's brand and stuff like that. Um, so, so the question was, how do you, how do you, how do you get more authentic, right? Like, how do you do that? And so, uh, so I and a bunch of other people were like, well, you know, why don't we just like go kick it in the community, right? Why don't we just hang out with people? Why don't we just talk with them about their struggles and, and, and stuff like that, right? And, and, it's so funny because so many enterprises forget about that piece, right? They forget, like, you can be doing everything that you think is right um, in, in your own personal space or in your own corporate space, right? But there's, there's something to just saying, like, the heck with it. I'm, like, I'm getting out of the office, right? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going to talk to people, um, I'm going to hang out, I'm going to kick it, right? And that's powerful. I think it's something that a lot of enterprises don't do. Um, if, you, if you're watching this and you work for a large enterprise, and GoDaddy is not a large enterprise by any means, right? But if you, if you do, you know, if you work for, um, you know, the, the Time Warners of the world or, or you know, the, the, I don't know, in, insert enormous, ConAgra, you know, enormous enormous uh, companies, right? If, if you just take a second to remove yourself from the world that you exist in and just go somewhere different and talk, talk to people about their hopes and dreams and things like that, um, you start to understand the world um, through the eyes of the people you care most about serving. Right, and and that I think is where it becomes really, really powerful. And that's, I mean, in many ways, that's what that's what Good Blogs does, right? Um, but but seeing things through those people's eyes, that's important. Totally important, man. So if you know, if anybody listening is in startup land, you know, they've heard of the book Lean Startup and some stuff, you know, and all the terminology there. But one of the terms they have is, you know, or one of the sayings they have in there is to get out of the building. Right, and so your ideas can be great on paper. You can speculate about what your your target customer wants, but until you actually go out there and talk to these people, can you then validate your assumptions? Right, and so you get out there and you say, okay, yeah, we're we have all this suite. GoDaddy's got this suite of tools that's really great for small business, right? And you go to small business and you're like, what are you talking about? I don't need any of that stuff. <laughs> what is this junk, right? Like, <laughs> like give me give me this, that, and the other, right? And then you're yeah. like, oh well, crap. Okay, well, I guess we got to go and build that, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember listening to this story recently from these guys that are going through the lean startup machine. Um, I think they're out of Chicago or somewhere. I can't remember. But anyways, they're like, yeah, we, they, they were solving this problem. There's a huge problem in their minds, and they're solving it. And they went out, and they talked to these people, and they said, that's not a problem. Like, that's not a problem of mine at all. I never even, I've never even thought of that as a problem. Here is a problem that I thought about, and they totally pivoted their business model, and they're, they're a success now, right? But until they went out and actually talked to these folks, um, only then did they actually understand what the person actually needed and the problem they were actually going to solve. And so you're absolutely right, man. It's, it pays, and I don't care what size company you are, you got to be doing that and actually talking to these people that you're targeting to see if you're actually feeling a, uh, you know, feeling a, a need there. So, so I want to hit on one important um, piece of that, and I've I've seen this happen time and time again. Uh, on on occasion, I'll uh, advise on business model and stuff like that for for startups, right? And I've <laughs> I I was invited out. Um, I I won't even say what city uh, because because that'll make it a bit obvious. But I was invited out. Somebody asked me uh, for their opinion. They wanted uh, they wanted my help. I sat down with them for about an hour. We went through the business model. We went through what they were doing. Um, I was totally legit about it, right? I was just like, "Listen, this this is what I would do. I would go out. I would get. I would 
talk with your primary customer, right? I think I think that you might find that you're a little off target, um, but go out there, do the research, um, figure it out, and then make sure and take the information back, right? The key piece that they missed was that they never internalized what they learned, right? Oh. And, and when you, when authenticity without an internalization, right, is junk, right? You can't go out there and be authentic, um, uh, you know, have a beer with somebody or have a conversation with somebody or do the market research in a really organic, authentic way and then not do anything about it. Um, it, 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 it it's, it's like a waste of time, right? You might as well not do it. Well, and that goes back to some of the negative feedback stuff we talked about earlier. It's like, and, that, and the, it's, it's the same thing, right? You can hear this negative feedback. You can listen to it. You can respond to it and say, we've heard your complaints. We're going to address it. But, <laughs> but only when you actually address it is it going to be taken seriously, right? right. Um, and how many times has a big corporation said, yeah, yeah, we listen to you. We hear your complaints. We're going to roll out an, an update that's going to that's going to help you with you know this X Y Z problem. And then six months later, they that's when they've done it. I mean, that just it's just going to add fuel to the fire, right? So you listen to these people, and then yeah, you've got to you've got to internalize it and make a change. There's no doubt about it. Well, yeah, the rule the rule to stick to in that is when you're engaging and when you're doing that research and you're you're talking to your customer and and being human, so to speak, never confuse activity with accomplishment. Just yeah. because you're out there doesn't mean you're getting something done. So make sure you get something accomplished to make, you know, to account for all of that activity that you're doing and keep a log of it. That's the one thing about being human too is you've got to keep good records as far as who you interact with, how you interacted with them, follow-ups, things like that. Don't waste it on your own brain as far as your own memory retention. The, the, the instant that you have those human interactions and walk away from a potential customer or lead or something like that, you should be on Evernote making notes or in Salesforce yeah. Mobile or something like that to make sure that you can remain a human and not a robot later on down the road where you're just having that human interaction, getting that contact information, and then reverting back to robot mode again with sending them emails. That, that's, you know, with, with blanket emails that you send everybody else. So always make sure that you never, never ever confuse activity with accomplishment. No doubt, man. No doubt. Marcus, I'm so glad you brought that up. And there's a couple things, and I'll send you the link, Mendel, so you can include it in the show notes if you if that exists. Um, it, uh, it's starting to. It's starting. <laughs> um, we're, we're working on it. <laughs> I just had a, a recent Forbes post that went up that I wrote about follow-up and how it's a secret weapon. Um, it totally talks about this, Marcus, man. Because because the thing is, is like you're human. These other people are human too, right? So they get back from a conference, their inbox is full, and they not only have all these action items from 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 new things from when they were gone, but they have all these things that they haven't even handled while they were gone at this right. conference or show, right? And so they're going to be super busy. And they even if they are the most well-intentioned person and they believe in what you're doing and they really want to you know, build this relationship, it's still possible that's going to fall through the cracks. We all do it, right? So I'll send you that link, and it just talks about some of the tools that you can use using technology plus your humanity um, to keep in, in touch with that person until they are ready to pull the trigger, right? And just like follow, you know, following up and, and not being annoying, right? But just making sure that you're top of mind until they are ready to do something about it. And so I'll shoot that link, Mendel. I think it's, it's short and sweet, but it has some good information in it. Um, the other part of it too, man, is I think that once you've so you've got a cold email, right? And I talked about like being human and and and, and not being having this canned robotic response. But then another thing that's really important, I think, is that you've you've already had a reply for that person, or you've had that beer or that interaction with somebody at the conference. Change it up. Like now you have this rapport with them, or I hate that word, but you have this rapport with them. Get rid of the formalities, man. Like just just be done with them, right? Like Mike. Comma. I don't even do that anymore. It's like, hope you're doing well, Mike. Right? Like, forget this. Forget the formalities. Like, start emailing them like you're they're your friend because they are. Like, they're becoming a friend with you. Talk to them about their family. If they talk to you about their favorite movie, or their movie they were about to see last time you talked to them, ask them how it was. Like, be genuinely interested in how they're doing. And build that relationship. I mean, right now, you know, I'm working with some guys potentially from Vayner Media, Gary V's uh, company. Um, and really, man, I've like, I feel like I, 
I'm friends with a dude. I, I really enjoy talking with him. We talk family. We talk all kinds of other things and 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 uh, life hacking and stuff like that more than we talk business. And it's because I genuinely like the dude. I really like him. And uh, you know, I if uh, he's in New York and next time I go there, I'm gonna have a beer with him, even if we don't do business, because I like the dude. And so I think that once you have that warm email, the dialogue really needs to change. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, so five uh, five minutes. Great conversation. Um, I want to know what's coming up with good blogs. What is what is some crazy stuff that nobody knows about yet? Just spill it all right now. Just <laughs> give it to us. Tell us where it's going. Tell us who your next huge client is. Uh, I don't know. You know, whatever you can spill, spill it. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, man. So we're we're there's a, there's a few things. One is that we're in such a large space, and um, we're I mean I feel like we're innovators at heart. It's really hard to focus in, and so what we're trying to do right now is be more disciplined and focus in on certain industries. And so right now, uh, co-founders at a conference um, uh, for digital marketing. The next week's gonna be at a, a tourism conference. We're tr we're trying to focus on the tourism space. We launched a blog for for Iowa. It's called. It's blog.traveliowa.com. We're doing a really good job for those guys, and we're just getting warmed up. And we're finding that um, a lot of the folks in the tourism space, especially at the state level, they're dying for content. They're dying to be um, connected to the folks that are doing fun things in their state. They're dying to have those stories told. They're dying to share them. Right, and so we're giving them a platform and a way for to say, "Hey, I just went to this place in Iowa, or I just went to this restaurant, or this is awesome event that nobody knows about that's really grassroots, but it's freaking amazing." Um, you know, here's this waterfall that nobody knew about the cave system, whatever the case may yeah. be. We're giving them a place to share these stories, man. And it's what's so cool about it is like even when there's stories in our backyard, we're finding stuff that I didn't even know existed, and I live here. Right, and so it's cool for the people that live in the state. It's cool for the people that are thinking about moving to a state. It's cool for the people that just want to come visit, and they're like, "Wow, I was pretty badass, and I didn't realize it," you know. Um, and so, um, is I that the new state slogan? It is, man. It I is. was I mean, badass, and I didn't even realize it. It's you know, it's it's unofficial slash official. I mean, I wouldn't put it on paper yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> um, Ballot initiative on the way. Yeah, man. So, so that's right. You'll see us on the Iowa caucus if that's I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> Anyways, so um, so so you know so we're focused on tourism uh, uh, and and we're we're gonna see kind of how that goes and at the same time. Uh, we makes it makes sense for us to start to start targeting some agencies because I think that there's um, we're, we're a serious complementary vendor for those guys. We align with the content that they're pushing out currently. You know, a lot of these agencies are pushing out a lot of branded content, um, but they don't have the engagement and they don't have the, the you know user generated content side of the things. And so um, we're looking to partner with a few agencies now. One in the healthcare space, um, and, and there's some other ones coming down the pipe. So it's really cool. exciting. Yep. Sweet. Um... So something, I didn't even think about this as a part of this conversation, but um, as we wrap up here, uh, well, first of all, before before I go into that, uh, what's your Twitter handle or how can people get a hold of you if they want to yes. have more of a conversation? Yeah, man. Um, be human with me, baby. Um, <laughs> uh, tw uh, Twitter, just add my name, at Peter Awad, uh, Peter A-W-A-D. Um, cool. and, and you can find me at PeterAwad.com. Um, but, yeah, Twitter, man. Let's uh, let's chat. I'd love to, love to, love to have a conversation. Cool. All right. So have an authentic conversation with Peter. And then what about you, Marcus? You can find me at my website, MarcusCouch.com. I just actually started an entrepreneur's newsletter there, so uh, just last week. So if you want, there, put your email address in the pop-up, and we're going to have some fun every week with some kind of mentoring and uh, public challenges that I'm going to put forth on some people and some businesses out there. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Marcus Couch. Nice. Um, it's, like, it's like you've uh, done this before or something. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, so check it out. There's... Uh, so I started the website, thecampfire.tv, and uh, what I'm going to start putting up there, and I, I, I can't believe I didn't even mention this to you, uh, Peter. So um, what I'm trying to do is every couple weeks I'm going to post a story from somebody in the community that's come up with an awesome um, idea for a business and has been fairly successful or very successful at their business, right? And I want to I want to highlight these people and... Um, kind of like what their story was. How did they get to that point, right? And and what were some of the trials and tribulations along the way? Um, what did they learn? And maybe you know what sort of adversity. A lot of success is, is it kind of blossoms from adversity, right? So um, you know what are some of the ways 
uh, one of the, some of the struggles and things that that uh, propelled uh, people to the success that they've achieved um, in the small business entrepreneur uh, world. And so uh, you can see on the website the Campfire TV uh, it says community stories coming soon. Uh, we're going to start posting uh, really cool stories from some really interesting people. Got some got some people writing already, um, queuing some things up. And uh, you can tell me offline if you're interested in writing a, a story. I won't obligate you to it uh, on the show, but um, but anyway, so uh, so check that out. If you're interested in um, submitting your story, right, being a part of that, uh, I'd love to hear it. And you can just go on. I think it's about the show. Yeah. So if you click on about the show, uh, you'll see a spot to leave your name, email address, and a message. Just give a quick shout. Uh, let me know. Uh, what you're all about and what you want to write about, and uh, chances are, I mean, you know, nine times out of ten, maybe ten times out of ten, uh, we'll we'll throw it up there, right? So, um, so do that. Uh, you can reach me at if you will it. So at if you will it on Twitter, and I guess that wraps up another episode of the campfire. Um, you can check out this this video on uh, on the YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash GoDaddy, and there's also a podcast feed as well, so you can subscribe to that. Uh, Peter, I really appreciate you coming on today. It was awesome. You energized me. Hopefully Marcus <laughs> thinks that I was more exciting as a host today. Um, Very good. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and, yeah, so ever-evolving... Uh, uh, hang out and, and, and podcast, so uh, get excited for more and more fun as we go along. Appreciate you coming on, Marcus. I appreciate you co-hosting. Thank you. And uh, for all of us signing off, thanks a lot for watching. Love Take it. care. Thanks.